That's a little bit better. Fills it in more. I wonder if I can go over even more. Might look better. Anyway, anyway, what are we here to talk about today? We're here to talk about Ingenious Fit line of networking gear. So Ingenious sponsored videos in the past, or one video at least in the past, about their cloud line of network hardware. Well, what they were able to send me at the time. Anyway, let's start with this. Ubiquity has been the 800 pound gorilla in the prosumer and small business, even to medium sized business line of networking hardware for a very long time. And they know it and the prices of their gear shows that. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy Ubiquity gear. It's like an iPhone, it just works. But whenever I see a new Ubiquity killer coming up in the OEM worlds, I am definitely interested in what they have to say. Side note, I'm not saying Ingenious is calling themselves the Ubiquity killer, but you get what I'm trying to say here. Personally, I run TP-Link's Omada system at my home. This is because it's very cost effective compared to Ubiquities. The controller UI is very, very similar. So let's see how this new Ubiquity killer stacks up against the competition. First things first, Ingenious sent me three devices to test and review. They didn't pay me anything. I wish they would have. I'd be happy to take a payment from time to time. You know how it goes. We get hungry out here. We gotta get paid. My reviews of their products are completely my own. So I'm allowed to say whatever I want to say about their equipment and I plan on being fair about it. Today's video is not a review about the equipment I have. Instead, it's more of a comparison on paper against other devices that are in its class of gear. So starting off, Ingenious sent me their fit line of hardware. It sent me a router, a switch, and an access point. The router is the XG60. The switch is the EWS 2910P, and the access point is the EWS 276 Fit. I do have these running right now. Took me a little while to get the gateway up and running. Anyway, you'll see all of that in the review video coming up soon, or maybe it's already out so check the channel anyway i have those devices running now i'm doing some testing further to put them through their paces and compare them against some other equipment that i have or have used in the past to get a better review for you guys to see if it's something you're interested in anyway let's start at the top this is the ingenious fit express four port gig poe plus dual core 2.1 gigahertz VPN router, AKA the XG60 Fit. That was a mouthful, that's what she said. Anyway, so we've got this router, pretty cool. It does have an SFP input, dual WAN, RJ45 ports, dual LAN ports with this second WAN, also able to be a third LAN port. And we've got PoE Plus out of one of the LAN ports. There's a wireless WAN, failover slash load balancing option too, if you have a 4G modem or something, and then a console cable. This thing is a beast. I gotta say that. It's tiny footprint wise, but it does draw a lot of power. Could be a good option if you're looking at a single device for a small network or a small office. Lots of options here. We're comparing that today against Cloud Gateway Ultra by Ubiquity. I haven't played with this guy, but I would really like to. Ubiquity, if you're listening, go ahead and send me one. I'll be happy to do a side-by-side -side comparison of these physical devices in my hand or any distributor that wants to sponsor a video. Hit me up. Finally, we're comparing it all against the Omada Gigabit VPN router, the ER605. This is what I currently run in my home network and is by far the cheapest router I've ever seen. That's worth a shit, at least. We're on to some spreadsheets. I hope you don't mind. This is not in dark mode. Our first column here is the Ingenious device. The next column is the Unify, and the final column is TP-Link. All three of these are Gigabit WAN, uh, LAN with the Unify being a two and a half gigabit WAN. Throughput, Ingenious shows the highest throughput capability on the firewall side between the three. Let me back up a little bit and say that I did my best trying to compare data sheets one against the other. So if I missed anything here or you find any of the information that I'm providing as incorrect, please let me know in the comments below. I'm not trying to sway anyone in one direction or another. I'm definitely not trying to misinterpret any of these OEM 
devices. This is just me doing my own research here, guys. Next bit, yes, they all do load balancing. They all have failover with multiple WAN support. The Unify does not have a USB input for that for cellular failover or cellular load balancing. Uh, that's not an option with the Ubiquiti. VPN support, yes, they all support various VPN protocols, IPsec, SSL, site to site. With the TP-Link Omada, I know that there's a direct connection, kind of like Meraki's, where you can have a Meraki at one site and the other, put them in the same controller and they can talk to each other over VPN pretty much automatically. I'm thinking Ingenious can do the same thing, but I haven't figured that out 100% yet. Security features, they're all pretty secure. Some are a little more advanced than others. All of these devices can run on a controller, whether that controller is a physical device or a virtual device, or it's built into the machine, built into the appliance, kind of like the Unify Dream Machine has. So the Ingenious in this case, I haven't run the controller yet, but I believe you can run it using WSL on Windows because it has to run on Linux or the box, the, the hardware device, $100 and it's a whole separate device. The Genius Cloud line does not have an option for an on-prem controller. It's all managed in the cloud, which is fine for the most part. I like having physical controller or virtual controller within the network. Not that that's a big deal when you're working on a home setup, but either way, there is this device, which is an on-prem network controller that's 100 bucks. Omada has an on-prem controller as well. Uh, the cheap one, the one that I have, the OC200, this is also 100 bucks. And then it looks like, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the Cloud Gateway Ultra from Unify has the network controller built in. That's definitely a plus for the Unify device. Moving on, maximum devices, this is a little bit, a little confusing because I believe they say from this device itself, not the entirety of the network that it manages. I could be wrong there again. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Ingenious shows, le recommends less than 100 clients directly connected to the router, to the, the uh, gateway with 16 VLANs and eight VPN tunnels. The Unify uh, gateway shows 300 plus clients and 30 plus devices. And then the Omada shows up to 100 devices, 20 IPsec tunnels and 16 VPNs. Again, I, this is a little confusing to me maybe even a little misleading. I'm pretty sure this is per device, not for the entirety of the network. Anyway, advanced features, they all have quality of service. They all have uh, bandwidth control. One really nice feature here with Unify is license-free software-defined wide area network or SD-WAN. And then power consumption, boy, what did I tell you? This ingenious device is a power hog. The Unify and the TP-Link are, are more conservative. This is also the only one that provides PoE plus output on the gate Way. They're all desktop. The Unify is not rack mountable by default. I'm sure you can 3D print some shit, but these both come with ears. So we're looking at uh, 200 bucks for the Ingenious, 130 bucks for the Cloud Gateway, and 60 bucks for the ER605 by TP-Link. Couple of key points. So the Ingenious is a high throughput with advanced load balancing and security features, ideal for high demand environments. A point I'd want to uh, add on to this, again, has POE Plus on the gateway. Unify Ultra is high throughput and advanced management features suitable for larger, more complex networks. And the Omada is budget friendly with decent throughput for smaller setups, good for standard VPN and security needs. What's my takeaway here? TP-Link is for basic home users, this series of TP-Link at least. Omada does have a pro series out now that I haven't played with, haven't really looked into. Maybe it's more for a prosumer line. And then Ingenious is for probably more advanced setups like uh, actual small businesses or even medium-sized businesses and then ubiquity the 800 pound gorilla they, i think this one is still leaning more towards that home user maybe a small office so moving on now we're going to look at switches so we've got our ingenious ews 2910p versus the usw light 8 poe and then the tl sg 2210p this is the ingenious switch where is it at hold on there we are. This is a pretty neat little switch, I gotta say. It's got two SFP ports on it, one gig SFP, not SFP plus, but it's all eight PoE ports. 20 gigabit switching capacity, uh, eight ports PoE, and it gives all kinds of options on how to set it up or what it could be used for. And the Ingenious Fit app. So far, that's okay, I guess. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. This could power IP phones 
as well. This might be a really good option for a small office then as well. All right, uh, compared to the Light 8 PoE, which only has four PoE ports and then four non, and the SG2210P, which is all eight PoE plus two gigabit SFP ports. The breakdown here. Again, G Ingenious, Ubiquity, TP-Link. They're all eight port. And again, I, tr I tried to compare these best that I could based on the specs, and this isn't right. It's a 61 watt, not 150. 150 is for the MP, 2210 MP. So the Ingenious, we've got eight PoE ports with two SFP for uplinks or the Unify, we've got eight gigabit ports, four PoE, four non, and those four are also PoE plus. And then the 2210P is all eight PoE plus two SFP. So probably the Ingenious and TP-Link are closest here, but please, again, let me know if I'm wrong down in the comments. So moving on, our PoE power is 55 watts versus 52 versus 61 watts. Then we got switching capacity of 16, 16, and 20 gig. A forwarding rate at 14, 11, or almost 12, and almost 15. Management, again, all managed through the same controller that you use as the router. They're all layer two. They'll have VLANs, QoS, IGMP snooping. I didn't see DHCP snooping on Unify, but I could be wrong there. Link aggregation, they pretty much all the same on those type of features. They're all desktop switches. The TP-Link does come with ears though. The Genius does not, I think. No, it doesn't. And then power consumption without PoE load is seven watts and Genius wins that one. 15 watts and 17 watts and then comes the price. So the Ingenious Switch MSRP comes in at $150, but they have it on sale for $90 at the time of recording. Maybe it's to get rid of this line and get in something else. 90 bucks, that's a good deal for the Switch. The Unify is $100 or 109, and then the Omada Switch comes in at 175. And then that price has actually gone up a little bit. I wanna say it was closer to 140 when I bought it, mm, this time last year, or maybe it was earlier this year. No, it was like November, December last year. Again, maybe it's being replaced with a new model. Now moving on to wireless. All three of these devices together, you get yourself your own little network. Basically, you've got a, a gateway router, you've got a switch, for wired connections and you've got an access point for wireless connections. That's all you need. So starting off, by Ingenious, they sent this, the EWS 276 Fit. Wi-Fi 6 access point, two and a half gigabit ethernet input. I think it does have a yeah, 12 volt power input as well, but that's, that doesn't come with it. it. It is powered PoE, which is typically how you do that kind of thing. Got a couple of options for mounting. They've got a bracket that comes with this, but this is kind of cool how it's got these little loops here. Wall mount. So if you want to put it on the wall opposed to on the ceiling. Now, of course we know ceiling mount access points provide that donut of coverage and that's going to be your best level of coverage using the device but sometimes you can't you can't mount on a ceiling for one reason or another so mounting it on the wall is better than it's sitting on a rack in the server room i i do like seeing that oems understand that and give you additional mounting options. And then the U6LR is the closest comparison in spec for spec against the Ingenious model. And then again, the EAP660HD is the TP-Link model. And this one also comes with a 12 volt input, but the, the adapter doesn't come with it. How do these line up? So they're all Wi-Fi 6. None of these are 6E. None of these are tri-band. They're all just plain old Wi-Fi 6, which is pretty much a standard nowadays. Frequency. So they're all on 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. The maximum data rate throughput. Now this is combined between 5 gigahertz and 2.5. So we're looking at 3.5 gigabits per second, 3.1 and 3.5 respectively. Uh, they're all three quad radio, uh, multi-in, multi-out or MIMO, MIMU, multi-IMU, MO, E-I-E-I-O. So the Ingenious and the TP-Link have two and a half gigabit ethernet ports on them, PoE, which is interesting considering the amount of throughput they're allowing on the device, maximum throughput. And the Ubiquiti uh, U6 LR is, a, is just a gigabit input. They all have PoE 
power. Unify is a PoE Plus and can run with a PoE adapter, but again, that's not included. All of these can run with power adapters that are not included. Power consumption. The Ingenius is 17 watts versus Ubiquiti's 18 watts and TP-Link's 22 watts. Max concurrent users. Uh, the Ingenius data sheet says 128 per radio. If there's four radios on, it's 512 users, right? I was told there would be no math. 350 plus users on Ubiquiti and over a thousand users on Omada. Not sure I believe that, but okay. The range on the Ingenius, I couldn't find anywhere on their data sheets or explainers on their website how much of a, a radius is covered with their access point. I want to say because it's similar powered, similar frequency, I mean, they're the same frequencies, it's all about the same as the others, but I couldn't clarify that, so I'm not going to put it. We've got 2,000 foot squared and 2,150 foot squared. Again, they're all managed through the same cloud controller as the other devices. Devices respectively. They all have up to WPA3 security built in, some features, they all have pretty much the same features. They're all ceiling mountable or wall mountable. What it comes down to is the device that works with your network. You're not gonna get a ingenious router with a Ubiquiti switch and a TP-Link access point. It just, it, that's not how you do things. I mean, you can, but you, you don't, just, just fucking don't do that, okay? Just don't fucking do that. The ingenious MSRP is 150 bucks. Right now it's on sale for $100 at their shop, at their store, their site. Some other retailers and distributors may have it cheaper or more expensive. I'm just saying on their site, it's hundred bucks. Unify on their site's $180 for the U6LR. And then the EAP660HD on Amazon's $180. All right, so if you were to set up your own little home network using these devices in either Ingenious, Unify, or TP-Link, here's what it would cost you today. The Ingenious would be the cheapest at $387, and then Unify and TP-Link come in almost tied around $415. So it's not much of a savings on one versus the other. I guess that's right as of today. Genius is the cheaper series to go with in this scenario. Is it right for you? Well, subscribe to the channel to find out. I'll be doing a full review of these three devices from Ingenious. So stick around for that. We'll see if it's really right for you. So far, I haven't set up the controller yet, so I can't really speak to it, but the app is pretty intuitive. It has a lot of information on it. You can gather a lot of data with it and control and see all your statistics right there in the palm of your hand, if you're into that. I like having large dashboards and being able to control things directly from my workstation, opposed to being reliant on my phone. What do you think about the Ingenious series compared to Unify and TP-Link's Omada? Which one would you go with or which one do you use currently and why? Leave a comment down below, let me know. If you made it this far in the video and you learned something today, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel get recommended out to others. If you're interested in purchasing any of the equipment that we talked about here today, I'll have links down below or in the pinned comment. They are probably all affiliate links, which means I get a kickback from them. Just putting it out there, it's not gonna change your price, but you know how it goes in the YouTube game. This is the kind of video that you enjoy. Consider subscribing for more like it. And of course, thanks for watching.